Hey, who wants to try? This video is not so much about what I'm making, but more about learning new skills, tackling things, experimenting, and working with what you've got. We gotta figure out what shape we want it to be. So it's kinda leaning. Maybe eventually, I don't know, maybe we keep this, this shape and then scoop out some of this with the other tool. I recently invited some of my extended family to take part in some power carving. The good folks at Arbortech sent me a couple of their tools, the turboplane and the ball gouge, and I've really been using them a good bit. I just wanted to share some of the knowledge about how to use them with others. So I grabbed a scrap piece of walnut and a couple pieces of firewood and I headed out to where my family was hanging out. We decided to see what we could make out of that. We had no idea going into this what we would be making. That's part of what I wanted to show and teach is just to try to use what you have to create something out of that. Giving yourself those constraints can really spark some creativity and working with what you've got is a skill that I think is very valuable. My wife tried it out as well as my niece, my nephew, and even my oldest son. All of them were carving on different pieces and they came up with some really interesting results. The turbo plane is really good at removing a bunch of material. It also excels at kind of gradual curves, so we use that for a lot of the outsides of these vessels and a little bit on the insides. After I guided each person as to how to use the tools, I would let them have a chance to use it on their own. It really takes a little bit of just feeling the tool to see how it works and how you're able to use it. I was a little more experienced with these tools, so there were times I would get in there and really remove some material. If you notice from my nephew's posture here, he's rocking on his legs and moving his whole body in a smooth motion. That's more of how you want to control these tools rather than just moving your wrists. Nice slow movements like that give you much smoother results. Plus, you won't get as fatigued if you're operating this way. Then we switch to using the ball gouge. So it cuts like this. Okay. Okay. The ball gouge is a detail tool that helps you really dig in and hollow out vessels. It looks almost like a melon baller. The ball gouge is a little bit different of a tool. After some instruction, I started to let each person try and create something different from the piece of wood that they had. It has a totally different feel than the turboplane. It digs into the wood differently and you can really get into some tight spaces with it. For each of these pieces, we were making some hollow type vessel. Something that was like a tray or a bowl or a dish, just something like that. That's all that was guiding us is that we knew we wanted to make some type of bowl or tray or dish and the shape was kind of coming to us as we went. And just like before, once I gave some instruction, I would step back and let the person do some carving and get more familiar with the tool, stopping them occasionally to check on the progress.
As you can see, my niece chose the piece of scrap walnut that I brought. My nephew wanted to use this long piece of red oak firewood. And my son wanted to help me with the piece of pecan firewood that you saw my wife and me carving earlier. Each of them had their own set of challenges as to how to find a shape within that piece of wood. When my son was carving, I stayed with him to help him with it. He's only nine at this point and I didn't want him using it on his own yet. Helping him get this experience will give him some confidence later when he is able to use more tools on his own. If you're interested in checking out these tools, I'll have links to them and a few other things that I use pretty regularly down below in the description. Once we were all happy with the vessels, we sanded them a little bit with some 80 grit sandpaper just to clean them up a little. We wanted these to keep a rustic look, so we were not going for a perfectly smooth sanded surface. Another thing I thought would be fun for them to learn is about using a branding iron. I brought my flame heated branding iron and we got to try it out on the different vessels. A couple of them were not perfect and these were good learning moments about what might have happened to cause the brand not to burn the image perfectly. Again, just diving in and experimenting. And don't move. Hold it. Yep, it's good. It's smoking. That's what we want to see. We got it nice and hot. All right, lift it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. One, two. Three. Oh, we moved it. Sorry. Hold it on there for a minute. Hopefully, it didn't cool off too fast. Oh, I don't see any smoke. Oh, so close. We might have rocked it a little bit. Next, it was time for some finish. We are adding some walnut oil on these pieces. This is used a lot by bowl turners and actually penetrates into the wood before it dries and hardens. I was worried about the pecan vessel in the middle warping later since it was still a little green when we did this. Months later and it is still looking the same. I credit the walnut oil with some of that stability. Work with whatever you've got. Give yourself some constraints and see what you can create within those guidelines. Oh my God. <laughs> she circled. That looks so cool. Yeah, it does. She did a little, like a little branding for me. <laughs> right, right when she opened. Right when she started. Oh, that walnut looks good. <laughs> what, uh, what did y'all think? Was this a fun project? Yeah. Yeah? It was awesome. So this one was kind of one that I did. Started out as a piece of firewood. That was a piece of firewood. Yeah. Red oak. And you kind of turned it into a cool little shape holder for something. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe and toothbrush then... and toothpaste eventually. <laughs> and then yours, Sam. That yeah. turned into a nice little, I don't know, kind of a bowl nice catch-all. Catch I like it. Yeah, and also you can... Perfect branding. Yeah. yeah. Well, good job. Y'all did good. Very awesome. Everybody did great. I had a lot of people, a lot of my family that had not ever tried it before, so some people just tried it. Some people did whole projects where they finished platters and bowls and carved vessels, and I think it went really well. So I'm losing light. You can see the sun setting back there. Had a blast, and uh, can't wait to do some more and show some more people about it. The pecan vessel is a catch-all tray that lives in my mom's house. Samantha's walnut vessel is something she likes to keep on her bookshelf in her room. And Isaac's vessel became a coin tray and lives on his dresser where he can see it every day. If you feel like I earned it, I'd appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.